Good evening and welcome to Proper Repair. We're not actually doing any repair in this video, I'm just going to show you the BMW scanner application and how to use it with Windows 10. You will need to buy the special cable which only works for this software which is usually included. The tricky part are drivers for Windows 10, but I'm going to show you how to get those in a minute. First we'll install the software, just double click on the icon and then basically keep hitting next, create shortcut on the desktop and then hit finish. Now plug in the cable. Remember to always use the same USB port. As we see in the device manager, the Windows recognizes the cable, however it doesn't find the proper drivers to use it. I found the drivers that work for me on this website. It looks like a nice place to get the wires from, yet I've had no issues. Still, proceed with caution, especially if link forwards you to somewhere else. In any case, you hit the download button and extract the file. For air files, I like to use 7-zip. Now we need to enable the test mode. Hit keys Windows and X and select PowerShell with admin permissions. Then enter this command, hit enter and restart your computer. After the restart, check that Windows is indeed in test mode and open up the device manager. Right click on the BMW scanner and select update driver. Point to the folder where you've extracted the drivers and hit next. Here comes the warning that your computer might self-destruct, which you need to confirm. If all goes well, you will see the success window and there will be no warning triangle next to the device anymore. To check that the cable works, open up the BMW scanner program and go to settings. Two green squares means you're good to go. Now we need to connect the cable. The OBD port is down here and it's secured by a small latch. Let's see what this program can do. Double click on the icon, hit continue, and here we see some basic data of our car, like the model, engine, VIN, and options. If you're buying a used BMW, check for odometer values on the instrument cluster and EWS module. If they don't match or are close to each other, chances are they have been replaced or tampered with. I'm gonna click the scan button, which is gonna run checks on all the modules that the program can communicate to. This takes a while, but you can stop it at any time most important modules are on the first page. First, let's check the DME, which is the engine computer, or PCM, if you will. Wait a moment and click on errors. Those can either be current or shadow, the latter being detected in the past, but not at this time. Those temperature errors are normal on a non-M car, the SES, however, doesn't want to be deleted in my case. I guess it is impossible to have a 20-year-old BMW without any codes. The errors can also be viewed in German, and if your local settings support weathered fonts, also in Russian. Now let's close this and check some live data. Here you can see some useful information from the PCM's point of view. For example, I'm gonna press the AC switch and we can see that the computer is receiving the signal and also commanding the AC compressor to engage. You can check if cruise control button on the steering wheel works, if your millennial anti-theft pedal works, same goes for the brake switch and some other systems. It's pretty self-explanatory. Under reprogramming, there are some special features, like write odometer, which I'm not going to be testing right now, and apparently you can do the EWS DME adaptation if they've gone out of sync. But I'm going to stick to the don't fix of that broken rule and leave that alone. Now let's go to the EWS module. This is a good place to start diagnosing a no-start situation, as you can quickly check if EWS is happy with all the inputs such as key, pack neutral switch and PCM communication. Another nice feature is to check the key status. As you can see on my car, 5 keys were made and if you lose any of them, you can also disable them. Of course, you cannot disable the one that is currently in the ignition. Next one, I'm gonna show you the light module and we're gonna start with live data. This is another useful feature for diagnosis if any of the light bulbs don't work, since the module controls all of them. Again, this part is pretty self-explanatory. If we go to the coding data, we can change some settings. Before changing anything, my advice is to take a note or a screenshot of your initial settings, you never know when you might want to revert to them. Here you will change settings if you've retrofitted head standard headlamps or set turn signals as side lights. The latter is something you might want to change if you've imported your car to or from North America. What I'm gonna do is set a warning to go off if the key is in the cylinder lock while the driver's door is open and hit that right button. Confirm, wait a moment and the changes are saved. 
The central body module is also hiding some candies. You can set up the one touch window functions the way you like or change the alarm settings. This is useful if you're replacing the module with a used one that came from a car that didn't have an alarm. The car can also lock itself after you started to drive, which can be set either for all or just for some keys. You can even set the speed at which the locking takes place. Let's take a quick look at the PDC module and we're gonna go straight to the coding data. In my case, it is set for automatic transmission even though the car is a manual. I'm not sure why this is so, but again, I'm not fixing anything that's not broken as the sensors do go on when I put in reverse. The settings that make more sense is to change the distance limit for the continuous tone. You might want to set that to a lower limit if you like to park your beamer in tight places. All in all, I'd say this tool offers quite a lot. To disable the test mode, open up PowerShell again and enter the off command.